let's continue this this series. And we're going to look at Romans 11, <clears throat> chapter 11, and just the one verse of 33. And uh, so one of the mysteries and miracles of Christmas that always fascinated me as a child was wondering how it was possible for Santa to deliver all those toys to every boy and girl in the entire world and accomplish that in just one night. I mean, it's, it's really quite mind-boggling when you think about it. And, and I, maybe you've wondered that also. And we've been, we've been showing clips of the movie Miracle on 34th Street, uh, where Chris Kringle explains how he is able to deliver those toys to all the children in a single night. And the clip this week was probably about 10 seconds long. So I'm just going to illustrate it for about a minute and a half because, you know, I like to I'm long wind it. But no, it's simple. What Santa Claus says, what Chris Kringle says is time slows down as I deliver those presents. Time slows down as I deliver those presents. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And now you know how Santa Claus is able to accomplish that amazing distribution all in one night. And I can tell from looking at you that, that you're not quite sure you believe that explanation. And I see some expressions of doubt. And maybe you think his method is completely ridiculous. And most of you now are looking at me like, what in the world does this discussion have to do with the Christmas story? Well, thank you for asking. God's methods it transcend us. God's methods transcend us. Part of the miracle of Christmas is the, is the miracle of the method. God's methods are beyond our comprehension. Paul writes in Romans chapter 11, verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Another translation says that his judgments, uh, how unsearchable his judgments and untraceable his ways. Paul begins this doxology of praise to God, focusing on the, the greatness of God on, on, and on how absolutely wonderful he is. His riches, wisdom, and knowledge are great beyond measure. His methods are beyond our understanding. And honestly, when you think about God's methods throughout history, but in particular in this Christmas story, it makes about as much sense as Chris Kringle's explanation, doesn't it? If, if we were writing the script for the redemption of mankind, I think we would certainly have written it differently than God. He chose to reveal himself to us in the greatest, grandest possible way, in a way that we could understand. And so he came into the world as a helpless, defenseless baby. God chose to be born to humble, poor parents. He wasn't born in a palace, but in a, in a stable. He was born to a young couple whose hearts were pure, but who held no worldly influence. They were plain, ordinary, obscure individuals. And yet, they were the ones that God chose to be the parents of Jesus. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 says, for, the thought, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways. This is the Lord's declaration. For as heaven is higher than earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's methods are different from our methods. We shouldn't be surprised at God's methods, of, at God's methods. He chose Abraham to leave his home and travel to a place of promise. He chose 
Joseph, the next to youngest son of Jacob, to become the savior of his family. He chose Israel, the least significant nation, to be his special people. He chose David, the shepherd boy, and not any of his older brothers to become a king of Israel. He chose Bethlehem, a very small, insignificant spot on the landscape of Israel to be the birthplace of his son. And so do you see the pattern that's being revealed? Over and over and over again, God chose plain, ordinary people through whom he could do extraordinary work. How impossible is it for us to understand God's decisions and methods? Luke records in his account of Christ's birth that Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem to register for the census. And while there, the time came for the baby to be born and she wrapped her son in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room uh, for them in the inn. And we know what a manger is. It's a feed and trough for animals and they stayed in a barn. <clears throat> and that's not even a Motel 6. <laughs> You know, Joseph, being the good husband he was, probably tried to clean the trough out and put some clean straw in it and, and move the manure away in place and, and from the place where they were going to rest. But it was still a barn. It was still a barn. And so God's methods include us. To celebrate the occasion, angels announced the news of Christ's birth but to whom did they go and share this wonderful and wondrous news? Shepherds. Not kings and queens. Not even the religious or military leaders. God chose to make this grand announcement to simple shepherds fulfilling their responsibilities to care for their, block, their flocks. The more you think about it, the more incredible the whole story becomes. It's almost unbelievable. Part of the miracle of Christmas is the miracle of the method. God uses ordinary people to accomplish ordinary, I'm sorry, extraordinary things. Following his resurrection from the dead, Jesus appeared to uh, first to a group of women. He didn't show up at the temple and boast before the Sanhedrin and say to the religious leader, leaders, I told you so. I told you so. And from a human perspective, we would write the scripture that Jesus rises from the dead and then returns to Jerusalem to prove that he was right. But God's plan was different. Following his resurrection, Jesus revealed himself to his followers and gave them the responsibility to go and make disciples of all the world. Baptizing them and teaching them to obey everything he had commanded them. And to that small band of followers, Jesus entrusted the good news of salvation. That's us, folks. <laughs> Think about the magnitude of what Jesus did. The salvation of the world rested in the hands of these few followers, simple, ordinary people. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and methods. Paul commented on this miracle of the method that God uses ordinary people to accomplish his extraordinary work when he wrote, Brothers, consider your calling. Not many are wise from a human perspective. Not many powerful. Not many of noble birth. Instead, God has chosen what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God has chosen what is insignificant and despised in the world. What is viewed as nothing to bring to nothing what is viewed as something so that no one can boast in his presence. That's in 1 Corinthians. So God's methods haven't changed. 
He still uses ordinary folks like you and me to accomplish his extraordinary work. Our abilities are not as important as our attitude. Our abilities are not as important as our attitude and availability. God has entrusted to us the good news of salvation. It's good for us that God can use even the simplest of vessels to accomplish great things. God's me methods sanctify us. Another aspect to this miracle of the method that we need to understand. God is at work in our lives in ways that we don't and cannot fully comprehend. In the same way that we would have written the script differently concerning the redemption of mankind, we would write the script differently for our sanctification. And once we begin that that spiritual journey through faith in Christ, we, we would ever be growing in our love and devotion to Him. We would never have any problems. Life would be heavenly bliss until the day we finally arrive at that eternal home. But we experience problems, pains, and pressures. We experience struggles and sicknesses. We experience temptations and, and failures. And we take one step forward in our spiritual growth and follow it with three steps backwards. There are victories and celebrations accompanied by defeats and despair. And this is not the way that we would have it. You know, I can't answer all, all the questions is why some things have happened in our lives or your lives, but, but I can tell you that when going through circumstances we don't understand, we are not left to despair. We can trust that God is at work in our lives for our good. We must choose to believe that God is working to shape us and mold us so that we become more like Jesus. And this requires us to believe what he has promised us in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. <clears throat> Even when the angel appeared to Mary to tell her that she would be the mother of God's son, there was no way she could have predicted all that revelation would mean for her. Joseph had no idea what would be involved when he obediently responded to the angel's message not to divorce Mary, but to, to take her as his wife. Joseph and Mary endured shame, accusations, embarrassment, and ridicule. But they also experienced the miracle of seeing God become flesh right before their eyes. They saw God... <laughs> The cost of obediently following God's plan was worth it for the prize of drawing near to God. God is at work in our lives to produce a beautiful tapestry. You know, my mother-in-law is so, well, she passed, but I was looking, she did cross stitch. And I said, we have them hanging in the house and We'll talk about the cross stitch here in a second and, and, and as an illustration, but the one, I couldn't find one that had all the little stuff in the back. She, she covers it up. <laughs> but anyway, from our perspective here on earth, we only see the back of the embroidery, right? You, sometimes you see these and they have all the stitching coming out, right? And, but the, but, but the, ref, the, front, the front reveals a beautiful picture we are looking at the underneath side and we don't understand why it looks so ugly. Why it seems so confusion, confusing. And it's impossible for us to understand all the different knots and colors and seemingly random directions that our lives have taken. I wish that my mother-in-law would have left all those knots and colors and confusion on the back. But one day, 
we will finally be able to see from the top side of this tapestry that God has been weaving us. God has been weaving us. And then we will then be able to see how the seasons of pain brought some rich, vibrant colors to, to our tapestry or this cross stitch. We will see the fullness and the rich, richness of the design reflected in the seasons of joy and celebration. We will see the depth of character revealed through the times of testing and trusting. And therefore, we must continue to trust that he is at work and that he is working for our good. Continue to trust God. Even though you don't understand how he is at work in your life, continue to follow him and your life will be richly blessed. The miracle of the method is that God uses ordinary people like you and I to accomplish extraordinary things for the sake of his kingdom. The miracle of the method is also that God is at work in our lives in ways that we do not understand. And therefore, we must choose to trust what we know to be true because of what he has revealed through his son, Jesus Christ. And again, we must choose to believe that God is working in us and through us for the good and his glory, for our good and his glory. He is at work weaving a beautiful tapestry that will one day be revealed to all and for all to see. If you'll pray with me. Father, you have, you, you have our lives all planned out. We know you allow challenges and setbacks and as well as you send blessings and, and, and breakthroughs. You weave us, Lord. We don't understand all those little threads that are going in each and every direction and the colors and the, and the chaos, Lord. But you see, you see it, it's clear to you and you protect us with, with, with grace. And you are in every room, behind every conversation, underneath every situation, Lord. You are, we cannot escape or, or, or we cannot even understand all your ways. But we trust that our lives are in your hands and, and we will end, uh, and, and, and we will end in, in your presence forever. In Jesus' name, amen.